ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere. <laughs> oh, let's start over again. Ladies and gentlemen, boys. Let, 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 let. Man, that was messed up, wasn't it? I think we're back. Are we back? Jeff, we back? Uh, we on? Uh, that's why I'm double checking. It looks like we are. Uh, okay. There's a, a lot of people that have been hanging around in the chat this whole time. I don't know what sort of evil no. magic allowed that. No, no. <laughs> I want to give credit. Mark Rogers, Mark Henry, and uh, Molkai, uh, no one, uh, Big Molkai, 01, they guys stuck, her, stuck it out and waited for you to come back so they all get uh, a nice high five. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. That's great. Uh... So uh, I'm having some trouble with the radio station, which also requires power. So um, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Let me uh, talk to this person. Mm. Uh, Gamer260 was also hanging around with us. So <coughs> apparently so, uh, power outages are normal there, Kelly. Is that, <laughs> is that what, uh, what you were it was, saying? It was so strange back in the day. We would have some kind of crazy storm and we wouldn't go off the air, but on the perfectly clear sunny day, we would go off the air and lose power. So we're taking bets right now. Which do you think Ken put first on the priority list, TNL or the radio station? Uh, I say TNL. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I'll, I'll, give, him, I'll give him TNL. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. So we're back. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, unfortunately, Jason Shepard had to ski daddle. So <sighs> he will be back on uh, the 30th. Yes. So uh, what, what were we doing? Oh, that's right. We we're about to do some Raz. <coughs> I really need the Razzmatazz right now. Because, you know, when the power goes out, when the show stops, mm. and it's not your fault. It just makes you feel icky inside, and we need the blue goo to recenter us, bring us back to the fore, back to the happy place. Kelly, your thoughts. Is it true you first discovered the razzmatazz while laying on a therapist's couch? It's true, yes. And <laughs> her jelly donut fell on my head. And that was the first I knew of the joy of the Rev. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. And we're back. Okay. All right. So, Jeff, it's time for the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Let's head over to the now functioning newsroom. Jeff Sills, what's happening, my friend? Tell us all about it. All right. So, fun stuff for the news this week. Um, Starting on May 15th, uh, a fleet of up to four drones are going to start helping researchers in monitoring supercell thunderstorms. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, this is a $2.4 million project called Taurus, which will send as many as four drones up into these storms flying nearly 800 meters in the air to gather data simultaneously on the atmosphere. Is it, is this is this a drone we're seeing or is this the the dropper the drone dropper thing? I don't know what we're no, looking at. This is this is the drone itself. It's it is a, more of a of, I guess an airplane type drone, but the the thing is, is if you sit here and watch this video, you can see the amount of stress that this thing is going to go through as it gets into uh, this these winds and such. I mean, it is a <laughs> it's an amazing little device that it wow. can take that kind of damage. That is uh, cool. And still bring back data. Neato. Uh, hold on, we have a, we have an important, we have an important chat. Mark Rogers says, ask, <laughs> ask Kelly Green why the baby doll pick. I want to hear the story. Uh, the thumbnail of Thursday Night Live has Kelly Green and uh, a baby doll. Why is that, Kelly Green? You can tell the story better than I can, but I'll tell part of it. Yeah. That doll, which we named Creepy Baby, kind of became the mascot for our radio show. And any time an artist would come up from Nashville to sing in our studio, we would have them pose with that baby doll. They would hold the baby doll, and we would post it on our social media. And the doll ended up becoming famous, so famous, in fact, that it actually got us an interview with Billboard magazine. Billboard magazine 
did an article on that doll on creepy baby yeah the, the, the doll's name is creepy baby and it became creepy because um my grandmother when she was put into a nursing home gave me some of her furniture and when i got home and opened up the drawers there was a creepy baby <laughs> staring back up at me it had hitched a ride from the nursing home and nobody knows where it came from. It wasn't my grandmother's. It didn't belong to anybody we knew. Now back you to know, you. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Creepy Baby in two years. Where is Creepy Baby right now? There's no telling. She could be anywhere. Sometimes she likes to hang out downstairs. Sometimes she's upstairs. Sometimes I hear the pitter patter of little <laughs> porcelain feet oh, running no. around. A little creepy feet. Yeah. It's back so there's to you, a Jeff. story, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Check you revisited. There you go. Yeah. All right. So next in the news, the Ultra Music Festival was uh, a site of what potentially could be uh, the first time that a counter drone company violated federal law. Oh. The FAA has stated that uh, during the... Uh, the music festival, they had a company that was supposed to be flying a drone uh, around taking footage. They had an Inspire and an Alta 8. Um, but they could not launch the drones because for some reason they kept getting a lot of interference. Comes mm. to find out that a Vigilant Drone Defense Incorporated was jamming the activities at the location to prevent uh, other drones from coming in. The problem was is that only the Department of Homeland Security and other uh, Department of Defense are allowed to jam drone signals, uh, according to the FAA. Oh, wow. So, needless to say, they're, they're getting a bit of hot water for what they did. And it's currently being investigated. As it should be. That's, um, well, that's mega illegal. <laughs> wow. Next in the, next in the uh, news, we have, uh, what is this, Fort Wayne? Uh, council passed an ordinance Tuesday night uh, to require drone pilots to notify the city when they plan to fly. Mm. We don't approve or disapprove the flights there at all. We're, we're requiring notification of those flights. The notification process is very minimal as far as time to fill out. You know, we've got it down to about a, probably less than a minute online. And that bit of notification helps us coordinate what's going on in the area. Fort Wayne City Council passed a new drone ordinance that will require drone pilots to notify the city when they're flying near or above a public event downtown. Uh, I think this is a sensible tool. I think it's a good uh, in enforcement tool by our police department and something that I think enhances public safety. So folks know when they're down at a festival or another event downtown that some of these things aren't errantly flying around and about to hit them on the head. At least one average drone pilot supports the measure. I think the regulation will help uh, keep the airways safe for drone operators to use them for what they're intended for. That way they're not out there doing negative things with the drones. For those worried about a municipal government stepping on the toes of the Federal Aviation Administration, Fort Wayne Police Lieutenant Jonathan Bauer says there's no need to worry. Uh, it doesn't change anything the FAA does. It just requires notification of flights in these two areas. Hmm. Well, you know, like I always say, we're in the Wild West days, and there's always going to be a state fighting the federal law and confusing everybody in the process. Well, and this 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 leads into the, sort of the next story, which was kind of uh, interesting. I, I I thought this one was uh, odd yet funny. In in the city of Jerome, uh, off sliding off sliding jail overlooking the hooking the looking overlooking the valley. Excuse me, I'm trying to catch up with this. <laughs> Near the Cottonwood Municipal Airport, people started noticing a no drone sign that had popped up. Okay. And specifically stated unauthorized drone operations prohibit within five miles of the airport, you know, for part 107. Any violations, you need to contact the airport at this number. What was interesting, though, was that if you called that number, the airport was surprised that the signs were there. They didn't put them up, and they had no idea where they came from. Yeah. Turned out... It turned out that the uh, the city had put the signs up as part of, uh, I guess, a May 2018 ordinance and put them up all over the place. They weren't trying to circumvent FAA regulations. They were just trying to 
point out to people that they needed to follow the rules and call the airport apparently yeah that's uh that's kind of um that's kind of wrong it, it, here's a little fun fact for you you know those stop signs in shopping centers like in walmart and everything if there's a stop you don't have to stop for those those are oh, not oh. those are not city go on kelly I, I got pulled over. This is no joke. I got pulled over in a Walmart parking lot by a police officer for <laughs> not stopping at one of those stop signs. True story happened to me about five years ago. And what happened? Did you get out of it because they're full of garbage? Gave me a warning. He didn't give me a ticket. Of course, because they couldn't give you a ticket. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those those stop signs, I mean, you should. I mean, it's you know, it's for safety, but but you don't legally, you don't have to. So... Yeah, just these fake unauthorized signs, man. Stop it. <laughs> uh, something fun for your audience to look for. Uh, several of those signs in Walmart were misspelled. So if you look at your Walmarts, uh, you might actually still see a couple of those stop signs that are misspelled. How can you misspell stop? <laughs> Trust me, you go out on Google and look it up. The misspelled stop signs, people got photographs of them. So, all right, S next in the news. I, go, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, church vlogs. Thank you so much. Five dollar super chat. What's going on with nighttime flying? Are we allowed to fly at night with lights? Yes. Yes. Check out my video on the subject. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next in the news, a UK company has been, uh, I guess, uh, hired to uh, scan the Chernobyl Red Forest. Well, UK scientists have been using drones to map the area surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear plant in Ukraine. There's Chernobyl in the far north of Ukraine, and the area that they've been focusing on is called the Red Forest. It's one of the most radioactive places on Earth, and this is what the drones captured. We know that much of the trees in these forests died in 1986 and turned orange after this huge explosion in the plant's number four reactor. It was the worst nuclear disaster in history. The total number of deaths is very much contested and the total always includes people who died consequently because of the radiation. Some estimates say 4,000, others go as high as 90,000 or more. Now these scientists from Bristol University use these drones to create radiation maps this is one where it's red, the radiation is strongest, orange a little less, where it's blue and green, weaker still. And there were some surprises that the drones found. For instance, see this small mark of red here, an unexpected hot spot in the south of the Red Forest. And if I bring up uh, Google's satellite images, you can see where the power plant was. The area of the Red Forest is here, where I was showing you that little red blob was just about here, towards the south of the forest. Wow. You know, uh, the UK uh, news guys with their accents, it's just delightful to hear. It doesn't even matter what they're saying. I changed my GPS to, ha to use a English accent just because it sounds more authoritative. Same. I say, you must make a left here. You numbnut, <laughs> you missed your turn. <laughs> Rerouting. <laughs> but uh, you know what scares me is that people still go on vacation to Chernobyl. People go there to film. They go there to the urban explore. That's crazy. Yeah. Would well, you do and it? that that survey is going to be very beneficial to them because it'll be able to help direct people to places that are safe and and allow for tourism to go through that area. Right. And then using that map, you can kind of guesstimate when certain parts of your body will start falling off. That's handy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next in the news. Uh, so Johnson authorities uh, in Smithfield, North Carolina, uh, are testing, I guess, the rules and laws that we have for drones with what the sheriff department or what the police departments can do. So they had a drone up uh, and they were looking at a property for stolen construction equipment. They had gotten a tip from another source that stolen equipment was there at the site. They flew a drone over the property, they located the stuff, and right. they arrested the individual and charged him with stealing the equipment. But the problem was, is that because the stuff was not in plain view, right, and this is where it gets kind of hazy, because it wasn't in plain view, it requires a warrant to be able to 
investigate or, or to enter the property. Right. Flying the drone over the property, according to the ACLU, means that they should have had a warrant if the officer was not able to plainly see into the property. Um, so this is going to be an interesting challenge in the courts. Uh, the first time that I think I've ever seen anything like this, and it's going to definitely test uh, some of the, I guess, what law enforcement can and cannot do and when they should have a warrant, when they shouldn't have a warrant. Deputies located stolen trailers and construction equipment in a wooded area off Woods Crossroads Road in Dunn. They arrested 37-year-old Nolan King Niddle for stolen property. He's in jail now. North Carolina law says law enforcement can use drone surveillance in a couple of cases, like if the area is within an officer's plain view. They can use it if it helps stop the threat of immediate danger or if they're flying over public property or if they think a suspect will run away or evidence could be destroyed. Law enforcement is also allowed to fly a drone with a search warrant. In this case, the search warrant to look for stolen goods was applied for after the drone was used to locate the stolen property. Whoops. Plus, the search warrant says the drone was flown over property that belongs to Nolan King Niddle and Morgan Mons Little, which means it's not public property. The ACLU says the drone use in this case raises some questions. The common sense solution that courts and people generally agree on is that if they have reason to believe that they need to conduct a search, they should go to a court and get a warrant from a judge giving them permission to conduct that search. And that's especially important when we're talking about such advanced technology like drones that can really expand their ability to conduct surveillance. We reached out for the, uh, to the sheriff's office for a comment and they declined to comment. Wow. You know, when the ACLU gets involved, you know you're done messed up. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be worth watching that one. Mm -hmm. um, so next in the news, we're going to step out to Japan. Um, the Diet there, which is their, I guess, uh, governing authority, is working on approving an amendment to their civil aeronautics law to ban the operation of compact unmanned drones if the person has been drinking. Okay. Apparently this is a big issue, and it's such a strong issue that they're going to apply the same laws to flying a drone while drinking that you would if you were driving while drinking which well, well that makes sense that, that 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 actually makes sense you know you you uh, can't uh, drink and drive a boat you know you get in trouble for pe people get a dui I, you hear it all the time people from florida sorry florida i was born in florida so i can make fun of it people in florida all the time getting duis on their lawnmowers because they're idiots they're like you know, I have my driver's license taken away, so I just hop on my lawnmower, party. Woo! It's still a, a, you're operating a a vehicle, so yeah. Hey, uh, I, hey, hey! I got an idea, Frank. Listen, you want to go to the club, right? You got that John Deere, right? Okay, I'm gonna meet you. I got my I got my John Deere. I meet you, woo, Parkers, party, woo! <laughs> When in fact, what you should do is not drink any mower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Peace. Oh well worth the wait. Thanks for sticking around. My news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last but not least is uh, one that I think is uh, pretty fun. Uh, a company's come up with a way to apply an event camera to, do to drones to allow them to dodge thrown objects. This is awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what the purpose of this is. Is it a game? No. If, okay. So one of the problems that you have with drones is that, you know, they have the ability to see obstacles in front of them and not crash into them, but they can't avoid obstacles that are moving. And in this case, the idea is, is that they would be able to put uh, event cameras on drones so that if something was moving at the drone, that the drone could actually evade it. Oh. This would be handy for like rescue drones that have to fly into hazardous areas, you know, that sort of thing. But you could imagine technology like that trickling down into our frame of reference. We'd have a lot less drones flying into trees or hit by flying objects such as people throwing things at them. Or birds. Or I mean, that would yep, be great bird. Uh, bird avoidance. Oh, wait, that would cut in on my uh, on my eyeball sales. By the way, <laughs> unless you can afford one of those fancy uh, bird dodging drones, you can get one of these, uh, a set of eyeballs for your drone. You put these on your drone, the bird thinks it's another bird, and shazam, no, uh, no worries.
ten dollar super chat. Boom. <laughs> now you had one uh, thing that you were going to talk with Jason about, and this is regards to the the memorandum that's been floating around on the internet. Yes. Um. So this is a leaked document. First of all, so first I want people to understand, take this with a grain of salt. This mm. is a leaked memorandum of an internal meeting that they were having that was discussing uh, limitations on flying drones uh, for hobbyists. But the interesting thing is that if you read into it, they're talking about hobbyists uh, flying in restricted flight areas mm. uh, near airports. Normally, you have to call the tower to get permission to fly. And the argument that they have is, is that hobbyists shouldn't be doing that. In other words, that, that if they're going to fly in a restricted area, they should be flying at one of the AMA fields or someplace that is a legitimate place to fly. They don't want the towers to have to deal with multiple calls over and over and over again from hobbyists all over the place trying to fly drones in places that obviously they surely shouldn't be dry, you know, flying drones in, at, at all. But, right, right. <clears throat> so I, I guess I don't know what to take from this. It's not a law... It's not a rule. It's not anything formal. Um, and no, we know it's, that a, is it's 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 a it's um. You know when you when you first get your drone, you don't know about all the rules and everything, and so and and most people want to be careful. They don't want to break the law, so you're going to get a lot of people that are going to call the tower because they heard other people doing it, when you really don't have to. And you know, <laughs> air traffic controllers—they're busy people. We don't need the distraction. Yeah. So this is actually a good thing, but yeah. we'll 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 get you more information on that as it goes. Now I saw somebody in the chat asking how was Texas. Now, oh. Now uh, you and I we finally met each other. Me and uh, Jeff have uh, been working together for a while. We have haven't met until this past weekend actually. And, and that uh, was a true treat. It was. It was. It was good to meet you. You're taller than I thought you would be. <laughs> I, I thought I'd be taller than you, but uh, we're. About the same height. Yeah. Uh, so I have some video that you shot while we were at the lighthouse near my dad's place. This is yes. on Lake Conroe. It's very short, but enjoy this. This is Jeff. And this is actually the uh, my old broken drone that you fixed. Yeah, this is the uh, the infamous Heronbird. So got a chance to, to take it out and, and shoot some video footage of it. And I used the, the ND filters. Uh, that we got for it to make sure that we got good crisp video nice and this is a an interesting little lighthouse it's you know it's not for any reason other than decoration but yeah uh, I, I could have served a purpose at some point but I, I don't see that it serves much of a purpose anymore other than just a you know a landmark but this is Lake Conroe it's a beautiful day uh, perfect day for filming out there. Well, and I had video, Jeff. I had this great, you know, uh, cohort with me that afternoon, and so I had to make sure that I shot some good video instead of that shaky stuff. <laughs> well, that was a very good shot. Now, uh, I think what people are asking about Texas is how was the explosion? You mean the explosion? Yeah. Look, look. Jeff has parts left. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This this is this is one of my trophies. If um, you're new to the stream and and uh, if you didn't hear what we were doing this past weekend, uh, me and Jeff Sills and Chris Rollins, we all went to Splendora, Texas, and the police department had us out there at the what was what was the name of the shooting range? Trinity. Oh yeah, Trinity. Yeah. That's, that's Trinity their police shooting range. Range, and uh, so we packed some Tannerite explosive target onto an old Phantom 3 donated by Jerry Calverly. Thank you very yes. much, sir. Yes. DIG. Thank yep. you very much. Drone interest group. And we had a sharpshooter shoot it and uh, it done blowed up. So what I'm going to show you is not the whole video. I'm going to spend this weekend editing miles of footage. We had a lot of fun. I flew a Matrice police helicopter we interviewed the police they threw me in the slammer all kinds of fun stuff so what i'm going to show you here is just a very short little tease of us out at trinity range uh the first one is a practice and then 
the real deal. And this is filmed with a phantom high speed camera at 7,200 frames per second. Enjoy this, my friends. Range is hot. We both got our plungers. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah beep that one out. <laughs> you set off the car alarms. <laughs> <laughs> It's not often that I'm moved to uh, cursing, but this. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow. You can feel that in your chest. Here it is again. You can see the shockwave. Look at the shockwave. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That was a can and a half of Tannerite. Now here is All right, we're ready. the drone. We're good. This is Thumbs the moment. Up. Good, let's go. Right. Woo! Oh, Lord have mercy, you did not miss <laughs> 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 This is a YouTube first. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. First time a drone has been shot out of the air and blown up on that YouTube. That almost looked fake. It was so cool, so unbelievable. Oh yeah. my so gosh. So this is all that's left. <laughs> that's all that's left. That's a lot more than I thought would be left. Yeah thing was vaporized. Wasn't that fantastic? Oh! Wow. Truly awesome. Jerry got the top shell, if I'm not mistaken, and had everybody sign that. And of course, I have the remote because uh, this is, you know, I was, we, I had flown it. And so we got everybody to sign the remote <laughs> as a trophy uh, as well. So, but, uh, and somebody asked in the chat if, if I wanted to rebuild the drone. And I'll, I'll tell you this much. Um, I have the remote and I have a camera but I, I need the drone <laughs> yeah I don't so, I think yeah. this one's beyond uh, repair <laughs> yeah. but oh, that uh, was epic man yeah that was really cool uh, I'm gonna put that video I'm gonna work all weekend hopefully if the power stays on this weekend uh, I'm gonna finish that video and uh, post it probably sometime Monday awesome right. well uh, Jeff thanks for the news Thanks for sticking around, man. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. All right. Man, got to love that Jeff Sills. Oh, I can't wait to see that video, man. That was the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it turned out a lot better than I thought. You know, lugging that camera all over the place, uh, all the equipment, filling up my car with all, all this stuff and... and Driving down 11 hour drive. It was and all worth the, it. The pressure of you had one chance to get yeah. that shot. And that was it. Yeah, just oh. the one chance. And that's all we had. Man. Mm. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, share some video. I have some uh, really interesting video from Robert Green. He says, hey, Ken, here's a video I took with my Mavic Pro. It's of Onion Creek here in Hayes County, just off uh, south of Austin, Texas. The waterway is usually very small and calm, but due to the weather, it was raging. Local kayakers used the small rapids near Teardrop Falls. I thought you and everyone watching TNL might like to check out the video. And this is from Robert Green. This is a, a flood. Thank you, Drone Assist Indiana. $5 super chat. Thank you. Try this again. First time I ever sent a super chat and I killed, I killed the power in the entire state of Tennessee. Huh. It was not your fault. Look how close the birds are getting. Did you see that? That was a couple of close calls there. 
Yeah, that's something you have to realize when you're flying along a, a river. Yeah. The, there's birds in them trees, and they're going to get scared from the noise. Check out up ahead here. These are rapids that are usually very calm. That's a lot of flooding. We had torrential rains in, in Texas. Look at that. Oh, wow. And here's what it usually looks like when the rain isn't so heavy. Just that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oz by drone. Two dollars super chat. <laughs> Shoot a karma. Just need a donated drone. Yeah, I could have had that drone you blew up, man. That would have been an upgrade for me, but you blew it up. Yeah. I tell you, I've gotten some email from people saying, why do you have to destroy a drone? You could give it to a kid who would enjoy it. Well, I could have done that, and you'd never hear from that kid again. Or I could post me blowing it up, and everybody can enjoy it. Yes. Yes. Well said. Thank you. So this is some good uh, footage from Robert Green. Excellent. Thanks, man. If you want to send in something, you can do it. Hold on, I think we're gonna go back under. Uh oh, no, don't do it, don't do it. Uh, very good. Karma never would have made that. No, send in, send in your footage here, Ken Aaron upload at gmail.com. Uh, whether it's uh, silly or fun or just interesting, you can do it right there. Now, um, speaking of action cameras, we were talking about the uh, Osmo action before. Kelly, are you interested in this camera at all? I don't think I am. We do a podcast here at the real estate firm, and I just use GoPro uh, Hero 5s to shoot the podcast. I don't think I would have any use for it. Now, you, on the other hand, I'm sure could find a lot of uses for it. What's the appeal for you? What's the... Uh, what makes this better than a GoPro for you? <clears throat> well, I, I use I use a, a Sony to to film most of my stuff. Um, I might if this has a really good. It's got uh, monitors on each side. I might use that as my main camera, and it has great image uh, stabilization. But our buddy Ash from Droning On, he's our UK correspondent. He does tech reviews, and here's a little bit, a little edited version of him checking out the Osmo Action for the very first time. The brand new DJI Osmo Action has just been launched, and we've got an exclusive early review of it. So it's time to give the Osmo Action a good test. I'm walking along at the moment with the forward facing camera so essentially it's in selfie mode and I love the big bright screen that we have on this camera it works really really well rotating around let's see what the EIS is doing if it's doing its thing to keep the image nice and stable because at the moment I am walking along a rather uneven bridge <laughs> in this test I'm really giving the Osmo Action some grief by shaking it in all directions to test the EIS and I'm being far more aggressive than perhaps shown because the movements are softened by by the electronic image stabilization, a system that DJI has named Rocksteady. However, if I now split the screen with the Osmo Pocket, you can see that the mechanical stabilization actually looks much smoother, but that's because it's stabilizing the roll axis as well, something that the DJI Osmo Action can't do. Let's test out slow motion, and we'll start firstly by testing four times mode. This is the same as the Osmo Pocket and at 1080p, but unfortunately there isn't any slow motion in 4K. The better aspect of the Osmo Action is that the slow motion mode doesn't crop the image in 4x mode as the Pocket does. Next, slow motion in 8x mode, and you'll notice that the image gets slightly darker, and I guess that's because the shutter speed is adjusted to cater for the higher frame rate but still the effect is really good. So another interesting feature of the Osmo Action is the voice control, which obviously the competitor, the Hero 7, also has. On that basis, apparently, I can say, stop recording. Oh, it actually worked. <laughs> so I'm now recording with the Osmo Pocket. If I say, start recording, and the Osmo Action starts recording as well. Now, another really nice point about the Osmo Action also is that I don't need to worry about any focus issues. It's an infinity lens, bit like pros, naughty word. Uh, but basically you can just point and shoot without worrying about whether you are in focus. 
Without doubt, one of my favorite features of this camera is that full color front screen. It isn't touch sensitive, but for vlogging, it's just perfect in terms of brightness, color, and size. So now that we're outside, we can really get the most of the screens on the new Osmo Action. This front facing screen is really nice, really bright, very clear in an outdoor daylight. You can see it very clearly. The backlighting is really strong as well. And of course, if we hold down the quick shortcut button on the side, it enables the rear screen, which also is equally as bright. But I love the fact that it also takes up almost the entire rear of the camera so that when you are out and about, you've got a really nice way to review footage that you've already captured before. As mentioned earlier, the Osmo Pocket and the Osmo Action are for very different purposes. I'm glad to have both in my collection now, and you'll see lots more videos from me on both of these great products. Yes. There he is. That's his kid. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That's a cool camera. And I want to thank Ash very much for letting us show that video. There's a link to the full review in the description. So now, Kelly, thoughts on the Osmo Action? All right, two questions. I know yeah. you don't have the Osmo Action yet, but it's on its way, so you'll be getting it very soon. If you had to choose right now, because you've watched reviews of the action, Osmo Action, if you had to choose right now between the Pocket or the Osmo Action, which one would you buy because the price is similar? I'd have to go with the pocket. I'm, I'm a, I would too. I would too. <clears throat> I'm a fan of mechanical stabilization. There's no, and you can argue to your head in the face, there's no electronic image stabilization that's going to beat mechanical stabilization. There's just, it's just never, there's never going to be uh, an Osmo pocket uh, killer, as they say, that's right, a not next, mechanical. Next question. Are you surprised how much it looks like a GoPro? It looks like a glorified go well GoPro. no not really because really if you get form factor keeps shrinking what are you going to do you have to have a box you have to have a lens you have to it's it there's no other way to make it look i mean maybe maybe the, the they'll get fancy in china you know like they, they'll make it look like a cat or no it's japan <laughs> wait it's japan that has all the cats right yeah, I think so. Hello Japan. Kitty. Came That's right. It's a hell. Yeah, they'll have the Hello Kitty version. Hello Kitty. But other than that, it's got to look like a GoPro. I'm okay. a, I'm a big fan of the Hero Session. And and they're gone. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we, we used one on the shoot when we had the uh, the Evolve, the X Dynamics Evolve, right? Yeah, it's. So they it, don't make that anymore. Uh, no, no, and they nope. should. Uh, that was a great little camera. Well, if so, I've got three hundred and fifty to spend, I'm I'm buying the pocket, not the uh, action. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that. So, um, man, this uh, this is throwing me off. Uh, you you got time to hang out, Kelly? Because I I got lots of great video to share. How are we doing over here, here, everybody? I'm here till midnight and not a minute later. Uh, okay. By the way, please remember that YouTube in the chat will default to top chat which will skip some messages. So change it to live chat and you won't miss any. And that'll be important when we give stuff away. Gonna give away some free well ND filters here in just a little bit. Uh, but first, this is from Don Coleman. Hey Ken, love your show. Never can catch it live, but usually see it the next day or two. Got some eyes from you a while back too. They seem to work great. No bird strikes yet. I also sent him some elephant repellent. So far, no elephants. Uh, we have a new structure here in Michigan, and I went by the other day and had to fly through it. So here it is, buh and by Don Coleman. This is uh, some big ring in Michigan. <laughs> it's an interesting sculpture. I don't consider myself a sculptor, but I'm pretty sure I could crank one of those out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's round. <laughs> and you got to fly through it, right? You got to. That's your only choice. Now the race drone guys are like, oh, it's no big deal. I do loop-de-loops through it. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go over it, through it, and around it. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> it does kind of look like a ring, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that was a surprise. It was. And Gollum yeah, made it. Nowhere. Yeah, just just right out of nowhere. Gollum made an appearance. <laughs> um, Kelly, you've been in radio. You've been in radio forever. Have you ever had a stalker? Uh, no, I don't think I ever did. Um, no. I have one no, nothing, I, when years ago. Nothing serious ago. that I considered to be dangerous. Yeah, and and uh, and and I'm not calling this person a stalker. I'm just joking, of course. But uh, apparently, someone really, really likes me. What? And her name is Julie. <gasps> yeah. So I I got an email from River Mersey, and here it says, uh, "Hey Ken, not sure if you're aware, but you have a lady super fan, or perhaps a stalker." Uh, she made a video that's seven minutes long of her liking every Ken Heron video she can find. So here is, here is that video that she posted on her channel. This is her just uh, not watching them. She's just liking them. <laughs> so that's it. She clicks on a Ken video, likes it, goes to the next one. And this goes on for seven minutes. What? So, um, my question to you is, yes. uh, is this a nice gesture? And I appreciate it. I'm glad that someone's not disliking my videos in this way. Should I be frightened? <laughs> no, you should marry this girl. Yeah, she's, she's very sweet for doing this, to take her time and do this, and make a video of her doing it. I mean. This is your future ex-wife you're talking about. Yeah, her, her name is Julie. And, oh, uh, no. uh uh you can't mar marry anybody with the same name as your sister. Oh, that's right. And your sister's name is Julie, too. I would never marry a Julie. I don't care how good she looked or how awesome she was. Yeah. By the way, there's an easier way. If you want to... <laughs> I sped this up a little bit just for time. But uh, there's an easier way of uh, getting this to happen. I have a playlist called uh, Binge Watch. You can binge watch every single one of my videos in this one playlist. Question. Yeah. How many views does her video have of her liking your videos? That's a good question. I think, I think 100 something, maybe, I don't know. Really? <laughs> maybe, I didn't look, I don't remember. I just thought, oh, this is I... a really unusual way to let someone know that you appreciate them. Yeah. That's the way I'm gonna look at it. And I thank you very much, Julie, for doing that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was a little a little weird, but uh, thank you so much, uh, Kelly. Yes. Uh, there's someone else that 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 likes me enough to spell my name out in LED lights. This is from Lee Payne, and this is really cool. You know those uh, LED lights on on the Mavic that spell out things. Yeah. This is his Mavic Two Zoom that he did. He programmed the lights to say. Oh, but and by <laughs> that's awesome. Isn't that neat? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, man. That's fantastic. That's from uh, Lee Payne. And what is it? Storm and cast. Wow. Ten dollar super chat. Thanks for the great content. You're welcome. Should we give something away right now? No, no, you're right. Let's not. Okay. What do you want to do instead? <laughs> okay, give it away. What do you hey, got? We're giving away more junk. All right. Today, up for grabs, of course, from Freewell, your choice. They have three delicious flavors of the Freewell All Day 4K Series filters for your Osmo Pocket, your Mavic 2 Zoom, or your Mavic 2 Pro. So, this is a $130 value. It's a very simple way to win. First correct answer in the chat. And again, make sure that you have selected live chat and not top chat because you will miss some of the messages. Okay, the question today has nothing to do with filters, but first correct answer will win. And no Googling. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll be here forever if nobody Googles. <laughs> I would say no binging. If you want to win, is that still a thing? What was that other thing? It, Ask Jeeves. Was Ask Jeeves still around? 
Remember I don't that? think that one's still around, but Bing is still pretty popular. Are they? Okay. Yeah, well, I, you do yeah, what you want. Uh, yeah. the, the question is, very simply, what is the atomic weight of barium? No, seriously, what's the question? The, the question is, what is the atomic weight of barium? First correct answer, we'll win. And now here is Kelly Green with a joke. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? What? Supplies. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. Oh my gosh. Flying Ant. Thank you. 25 hour super chat. Holy cow. Tommy works. Two hour super chat. Please say super chat in Donald Duck's voice. People are already getting the answer. Uh, hold on. I got to do this for Tommy works. <clears throat> That's all I got. Uh, did somebody <laughs> did somebody win? Uh, yeah, but oh, maybe. Now, okay, you have to have the U next to it. So the first person that did did that is the winner of the free well filters is I think it's David Ma. Am I correct? I don't know. I was trying to to go back up. I saw D D Dave Earl and somebody. Deb I don't. Know. David Ma. <laughs> Look, Ma, I won filters. <laughs> very good. Uh, so congratulations and thank you very much to Freewell for supplying those filters. Appreciate it. Um, Have you tried those on the pocket yet? They're all very good filters. They're very well made. Um, I, I'm trying to remember what the, the word was. What was... There was a word I wanted to remember. What was word it? I what was the I word? word? I don't have it. Oh, the word. It's bird. Bird is a word. I went everybody's heard about the bird. All right. Ah, oh, man. Show is just uh, bop, bop, bopping along. If you've rejoined us after the uh, power failure, thank you for doing that. Apparently oh, the can whole... I ask a question? Uh, yeah, what is it? So you also <laughs> right now are sitting... I'm sorry, what were you saying? You're also sitting at a radio station. <laughs> yeah. Is the radio station back on the air? Nope. <laughs> I got the transmitter on, but the computers are hosed. Oh. Yeah, both of them. Jeff and I took bets on what was the higher priority, Thursday Night Live or radio station. We both went with Thursday Night Live. No, because, no, I would have been on 10 minutes sooner had I not at least tried to get the radio station on. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I, I, I did. I did my due diligence. I did. I turned it back on. That's what I'm, that's why I'm, don't go, come back. Kelly, come, Kelly, don't do it. Kelly, okay, okay, come back. <laughs> so um since Jason Shepard uh, from remotepilot101.com isn't on tonight then um I'll just have to share that would you ride it with you oh oh yeah. by the way Jason will be back on May 30th correct that's right May 30th so the would you ride it for tonight is pretty interesting it's made by a company called Airbus and uh it's a thing called Project Vahana. Vahana, check it out. <laughs> okay, well, here it is anyway. <laughs> you may have seen this before. It's kind of a hybrid between a drone, a quad, and, a, and an airplane. And the nacelles vertically lift it up, and then it gets forward momentum, and then I guess the little mini wings come into play. They intend to open up urban airways by developing the first certified electric, this is electric, self-piloted vertical takeoff and landing passenger aircraft. They uh, think this is going to be a replacement for short-range urban transportation like cars and trains. And uh, there's no other project that incorporates this much automation in vertical flight. It's made by Airbus, so it's a good company. Did you say it's made by Hasbro? Is that what you said? Hasbro. <laughs> Parker Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, Price. Yeah. It's, it's, 
It's my first airplane. <laughs> <laughs> All these references no one's getting. Uh, so, I don't know. What do you think? Would you ride it? In the chat, I want to ah. know. Would you ride it? What are people saying? Uh, you bet I would. I'd ride it for sure. Yes, do a vibe. Yeah, most people are saying they'd ride it. There's no way I would ride that. No. Why not? It, it looks pretty stable, man. It looks pretty stable. Yeah. It looks pretty stable. Okay. No. You wouldn't. No, I would not. I don't, I don't even looks... like getting on a, an air, a United or a American Air, a Southwest. I don't even like getting on an, a legitimate airplane, let alone some uh, test it, Dummy it, it is experimental. I mean, you keep thinking of uh, John Denver, don't you? John Denver and yeah, Buddy Holly, Buddy Holly, yeah. the Big Bopper. Yeah, all those little, all those little planes. I think yeah. I might ride that one. Okay. I think I might ride that one. Yeah. The hey, the grumpy vlogger says he would ride it, and if he says he'll ride it, by golly, you should ride it. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Ah. Uh, Let's see, let's see. Oh. Oh. Peter, our buddy from uh, France, sent in a really cool uh, video of a post office drone from Monaco. Check this out. He said, hey, Ken, proud to send you a video I made today in Monaco. The post office was making a demonstration of their future drone delivery, so I filmed it for you. The drone is built by a young man who has a drone shop in Monaco. Best regards and good TNL to you. Peter. So it looks like a Matrice 200 with a box under it. <gasps> I was going to swallow up that lady. <laughs> I guess that's the future, right? No, that's not the future. It's not? We're not going to see packages being delivered and mail and everything? Uh, you've, you've talked about this on the show before. Power lines, trees, uh, kids. I mean, there's too many things that could go wrong. Rednecks with rifles. <laughs> well, there is that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to you have to consider that. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna fly your very expensive, I live in Tennessee, and I know that on New Year's and Fourth of July, there's gonna be people firing their guns into the air when it makes the same amount of noise when you fire it into the ground. But for some reason, <laughs> we gotta shoot up in the air, man. I've never looked at it that way. That is so true. Right? Yeah. It's not any less noisy if you shoot it right into your lawn safely. But no, we got to <laughs> pew, pew, pew. We don't care where the bullets land. Yik, dik, 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 dik. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> There's a little safety tip from your pal Ken. Shoot the gun oh. into the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <gasps> well, there you go. All right. So Jordan sent a video, and Jordan is from Martin, right there, down there, like that. You know, around there, like that. He yeah, says, he's not far from you. That's right. He says, uh, hey, Ken, my name is Jordan Smith. I shot this video in Martin, Tennessee, of a local grain business. It's one of the best I've gotten with the Spark. This is done with the Spark. Let me know what you think. Maybe it's good enough for the show. I hope so. Have a good one, but, and bye, Jordan. So... Let's show this. This is done with the spark. You don't see a lot of uh, spark videos that are cinematic necessarily. What do you think, Kelly? That's good. Yeah, the spark is, uh, what is that, a two-axis gimbal on that? That's right. It, that looks good. It does. Color's good. And that is in uh, Martin, Tennessee. I do have to say, Jordan, that uh, it's good footage, but it is a little grainy. <laughs> do it. Could you see that coming over the Brooklyn Bridge? I knew a pun was coming. I didn't know which one. <laughs> you see, it's a grain silo, and it's a little grainy. You see? Okay. Sorry, Jordan. Great Mulch. job. Nice. Very good. That was good. Thumbs yeah. up. Again, if you want to send in your video, you can send it to KenHarronUpload at gmail.com. You can also email me candy. candy. Oh, you can't email me candy. You can send me candy. 
Ken Heron, 215 Baker Road, Huntington, Tennessee, 3344. You know that I didn't get any uh, mail, any uh, snail mail this week? Slow week? It's been a slow week. Uh, Properly twisted said, breaking news, GoPro Karma crashes into Tennessee Power Station, many currently without electricity. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I, I think I actually... I think I actually have that uh, that footage because you know the power is out. I think I have the footage of of that here. <laughs> this is the GoPro Karma that Kelly owns. Funny every time. You don't hate me. You don't hate me. You love me. Come on. Come on, we've been buddies forever. Go. Okay, okay. 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 okay, all right, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have a, a video from Norman Bland, mm -hmm. and then you and I, we're gonna play one second song. <gasps> you wanna play one second song? Isn't that the best? <laughs> Good boy. You do good boy. You good boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Norman Bland says, hey, Ken. And I'm not using his uh, English accent. I would value your input on the following video. I'm still learning when it comes to this stuff. I was basically just trying to get video of the town and remain 150 meters from any buildings over four stories. Um, the store I'm filming in front of opens at 10 a.m. on a Sunday, so we agreed I'd be clear of the site before 9.30 a.m. I got some good stuff here for you to see. Thank you in advance. Keep up the good work, Norman Bland. So here he is in his little UK town of Newbury. Newbury, or Newbury, right, that's one, how they one say drone it. in the car park at Sainsbury's. There's a nice sunrise coming up over there. And we're uh, at the store in Sainsbury's in Newbury, with permission. And uh, it's a nice guy, that's the... Uh, building I'm having to keep 150 meters away from because it's a high rise so that's why I've uh, chosen this as a space to take off it's one of the buildings I'm actually looking to photograph today uh, I just want to try and get a nice overview of Newbury from here I came down last night got permission from the uh, store manager here to come and fly they basically gave me the criteria of uh, make sure you finish before half past nine when staff start arriving to open the store at ten o'clock so uh, hopefully all good just waiting for the craft to warm up which it isn't now so uh, I shall finish this and uh, go and do some flying. Mm -hmm. It's breeze in New Bree. There's a lot of breeze in UK. Ain't that party? That's nice. At real. accomplished thank you very much to Sainsbury's and the uh, store manager who said it was nice for me to come and uh, do that this morning uh, so their only criteria was that I'm finished with half past nine and it's uh, definitely before half past nine because it's just about six o'clock sorry about the shaky video then I was looking to watch uh, but uh, if I pan across here we can see the Sun is uh, just rising nicely over there in the east and uh, we're at the Sainsbury store in Newbury and the reason for doing it off this car park is so I could avoid that small building over there. I need to be at least 150 metres away from it, which I was. And there's the uh, police station over there. And they... but, uh, all done. Thank you very much. Well, that's nice. Thank you so much, Norman Bland. Appreciate you um, sending that in. Yes, do you Kelly. Want to do the pun, or do you want me to? Go on. It was a good video. It really was. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit bland. <laughs> all right. So, and now something that has nothing to do with drones at all, but it sure is fun. It's 
a song, it's a song, it's a one second song. So it's way too short for you to try to sing along. It's a song, it's a song, it's a one second song. Take a guess and see if you're right or wrong. It's a song, it's a song, it's a one second song. You can win a prize made in Hong Kong. All right. Now, uh, I've lost my screen. There it is. My screen's back. We still on? We good? We're on. Okay, yes. excellent. Kelly, you are really good at guessing the one second song. Why don't you, while I get this stuff ready, tell everyone how this works? It's a game we used to play when we used to do our radio show, and Ken's going to play one second, just one second of a classic song, a well-known song. All you have to do is name that song from the one second you're about to hear. Give us the answer in the chat. Play along at home. Yeah, and uh, we can do this with the actual music because YouTube won't flag me if we just play one second of the song. Normally, after you guess the song, we would play the hook of the song, but you're going to have to sing it in your head. Um, oh, wow. Official PLK YouTube. <laughs> $20 super chat. I love this channel. And I love you for loving this channel. In Aww. fact, I love you more each and every second that passes. Uh, official PLK YouTube. There's nothing I'd rather do than have you watching. Kelly, look at that. He means it as well. All right, now back to the thing. So let's start with, uh, oh yeah, all right, here we go. One second song, play along at home. Wait, are you gonna play for somebody? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, and we Just, give the, uh, uh, say, play I, for me in the, in the, super, in the chat. Say, yeah. Play for me in the chat and I'll play for you. And uh, Kelly will pick someone to play for and the prize this time will be? A Phantom 4 that's sitting right behind Ken. Right no, back it'll be this Zing thing. This Zing thing is 3D printed and it straps onto your Mavic and you can deliver things with it. Here, let me uh, let me show you here. It's got a little thing in here and you you put stuff in there like maybe a sandwich or a, <laughs> or a beer or or toenail clippers. <laughs> you can deliver, you know, cuz you never know when you're going to need toenail clippers. Uh you know, very often I think to myself, I think you know, I could really go for uh, some nice shop toenail clippers right about now, but I don't want to wait and buy them. I want a drone delivery of them. <laughs> is that a man or a woman that I don't know. a lot? I don't know what okay. that is. But, All right. but you think there's anybody clipping their toenails right now going, oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> We are playing for Jeepin and Drones. Jeepin and Drones said play for me, so I'll okay. play for you. All right, very good. So uh, you, there's 21 of them, and you have to get how many? 20. Oh, 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 oh. Kelly's 19. really good. All 19. right, okay, 19. Now, if you know it right away, give people in the chat a little bit of time because you're so good at this, all right? So here's the first one, and that wasn't it. All right. Here it is. Yeah. One second song. I think I've got that. And it's not necessarily the beginning of the song. Is that Break My Stride by Matthew Wilder? Dude. Very good. You got it. I didn't think you'd get that one. That was a tough one right off the bat. All right. Here's the next one second song. A little tougher, I think. I have never heard of that in my life. You got to be over 50 to get this. Mean, sweet, song. You know it. 70s? Is that from the 70s? It's a cartoon theme. Mean, sweet, song. A cartoon oh, you theme. didn't get it. Wait, are people in the... We're going to have to go to the chat for this one. Anybody know I it? Go to the chat. Save me in the chat. Mean, sweet, song. Anybody? We got no. that much of a lag going on. <laughs> and it's from it's from a cartoon. Yeah, it's a theme to a cartoon. Mean, sweet, song. <laughs> Nobody, you stumped everybody in the chat. Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, I almost said that. Oh, 
you did not. <laughs> Long hair and tails for hats or something. All right, here's the next one. Yeah. <laughs> one more time. Yeah. I just want to use your love tonight. Your love by the outfield. Yes. Very good, Kelly. Very good. All right. Here is the next one second song. Try to get some obscures in there. This is an instrumental and was actually a hit. I think it's called popcorn. <laughs> What's it called? It is called popcorn. Can you name the band? <laughs> what goes with popcorn? The butter, the bu the butter. It's it's called popcorn by hot butter. Hot butter. <laughs> yeah. All right, so does he get the point? Yes, he does. All right, he gets the point for that one. Uh, here's the next one. A good, good, good. <laughs> uh, good vibrations by the Beach Boys. Yes, yes. All right. Wow, people are people. Are, yeah, too easy. He says too easy. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, you'll get this one right away. One second song. Tell something about Trouble Wamba. Yes. And what happens? I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Now you're not a rocker, Kelly. Oh <clears throat> no. But this was really more of a top forty song. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You've heard it a million times. Anybody? Is the artist Def Leppard? Yes. <laughs> Peter De Demestre oh, says, oh, 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 oh. "Oh, I don't think it's pour some sugar. Is it pour some sugar on me?" Yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sticky and sweet from my head to my feet. <laughs> A lot of people in the chat knew that one. Yeah. One. All right. Here, here we. Oh, this is right up your lane. Down, 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 down. Don't bring me down by ELO. Yeah. I bet a lot of people are going to be adding some songs to their playlist tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're a fan of Yellow. Okay. This one I'm not sure you'll get or not, but it's a great song. Ready? Hmm? One second song is what we're playing if you just joined us. One, two, three. <laughs> My baby don't mess around because she loves me so much as I know for sure. <laughs> One, two, three. Uh. Uh, that is Outcast. Hey, ya. Oh, yeah. Shake it, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is one of my favorite songs of all time. Oh. Isn't that great? That is in excess, the one thing. Yes. Isn't that the kind of song you just want to crank to your speakers break? I'll never forget it. And it's one of those little things that you never forget. A buddy of mine named John Holiday in high school said, dude, man, I just heard this great band. Have you heard of Inks? No. I said, I said who? Inks, man. They're the great. Oh, dude. I said, I think they're called in excess, man. He what? I'll never forget that. John Holiday, if you're watching right now. Dude. He said inks. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> oh, Mark Rogers says, put a playlist together of the one second songs for those who want a playlist. Sure. I, you know, the, you know that, uh, that app called Shazam? Yes. How long of a clip do you need for it to... Will, will one second work? Somebody try Shazamming these things. All right. Uh, oh, okay. You'll get this one. This is a great song, too. You ready? Mm -hmm. One second song. Oh. <laughs> is it Working for the Weekend by Loverboy? Oh, my goodness. Yes, it is. 
Wow. Very good. All right. Here's a newer one for you. No trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No I've got trouble. This on my playlist I'm listening to right now. No trouble. <laughs> What's that is up? Megan Trainer all about that bass. Yeah. You know she's all about that bass, about that bass, about that bass. No trouble. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now you can call me names, but this is probably in my top ten favorite songs, only because. It reminds me of a girl I dated named Dolores Hellman. When I lived in uh, Kaiser, West Virginia, if, if there's anybody in Kaiser, West Virginia that, that knows Dolores Hellman, I dated her when I was when I was 18. And, well, she was a little bit younger than that, good grief. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this song reminds me of her. Why? Why? Do you want a story? Do you have a story? Well, it was a beautiful night in West by God, Virginia. The stars were twinkling. I don't know why I'm using this accent. Her air conditioning was out when I went to visit her house and she had all the windows open. And she and I, I just snuck past her mother. Her mother hated me, so I would sneak in at night. We were sitting there on her windowsill, and we kissed for the first time. And then, a shooting star goes by. And I thought, it's magic. And then on a broken radio down the hall, I hear this song. You tell me what it is. <laughs> Ooh, that's tough. One more time. And I met the lead singer when I was an intern at WEGX in Philadelphia. You've heard it, right? Yes, it's familiar. It's a great song. I'm going to listen to it in the car on the way home. The Happy Bone says Dream Weaver by Gary Wright. I don't no, know but that's, that's a great it. song, too. Um got one of the longest intros of any song if you're a dj and you you want to walk up this song and read war and peace you can do it i don't know what <gasps> really give me a hint. can you give me a hint can you drop me a hint mark h says the steve miller band big mike one got it yes it's the moody blues your wildest dreams isn't that a great little song good song yeah Reminds they had me. some good songs reminded me of dolores hellman all right, just a few more. And uh, this is the song, and everybody in the chat will go, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> what a karaoke. That's such a big karaoke song. Oh, yeah. What uh, is it? Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. That's right. Touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. <laughs> Etc. All right. Sweet Carolina. Ba, he'd, always, ba, ba. he'd always throw an extra syllable on every uh, every line of the song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, nope. Mm, nope. Okay. Oh. <laughs> when I first heard it, I. Th thought it was crimson and clover but i'm not sure no that's it if one you more just time. if you just joined us we're playing one second song ah i'm gonna kick myself when you tell me this one one more time one more time <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. goodbye to you my trusted friend we had joy we had fun we had seasons in we've song. been together since we were nine or ten Together we climb something and something in hills and streams. Oh. Goodbye, you. It's hard to die. <laughs> Man, so everybody in the chat was getting that. Good job. Navy what? Dave, John Wintered. Good great job. Great song, man. All right. Oh, here we go. 
Uh, that's uh, the romantics talking in your sleep. Yes. Very good one. Oh, you'll get this. One. I know this is one of your favorites. This this one. This is a skinny tie band from the 80s. You ready? Oh, I love the Thompson twins. Hold me now. Hold me now. Yes. Oh, huge fan. <laughs> Sing it, Kelly. I have a picture into, into my, my wall. wall. An image of you and, and of me, and we're laughing, me. we're laughing it all. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Uh, all right. Yep. Oh, okay, just a few more. Oh, wait. Okay. Now, baby, give it up. Give it up. KC. It wasn't KC in the Sunshine Band, it was just KC, I think. KC in the Sunshine Band. Give it up. Give it up, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, this is a rocker. You'll never get it. It's the last one second of the song. If I get it, you buy me lunch? If you if you get it, I'll buy you lunch and dessert. <gasps> you ready? Swing it! <laughs> Swing it! Nothing? One more time. Swing it! This is a song I played at the nudie bar when I DJ there. Yes, that I is that is Swing it. that is cherry pie by oh, Poison. You are reading the no, chat. I did not. As soon as you said nudie bar, what, what song do you think of? <laughs> All right. What song do you think? Of? All right, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give that one to you. Who was that? Cherry? Was that poison? No, it was Warrant, wasn't it? Yeah. Dave said it was it, it was Warrant. Yeah, yeah, Warrant, Cherry Pie. All right, all right, just All right. a couple more, and this is a good one. No. She's a lady. She's a lady. Talking That's about the sexy lady. And the lady is, is mine. mine. I'll give you that one. <laughs> That's Tom Jones. Love him. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. Last one. Yes. Half a second. Is it true by Spandau Ballet? Yes, it is. Very good, Kelly. Very oh, good. Oh. Oh, what's this? Always in time, but never in line for dreams. Head over heels, well, to to to. This is the sound of my soul. This is the sound. I bought a ticket to the world, but now I've come back again. Take it. I know this much is true, Kelly. I know this much is true. All right, all right, all right. That's enough. I think I turned in the Bee Gees there for a second. A fun song to sing. It's okay. I haven't gone to karaoke in a long time. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, the show's just about over. I think it ended just about 30 seconds ago. Oh, did uh, it ever? Yeah, it did. Let's see. Jeepin' and Drones wins that little gizmo gadget you got back there. Hey, congratulations. Yeah! I'll send this to you. And then you can send your toenail clippers to whoever you want. Yes. You send your clippers out. All right. Um, let me see here. I got this and then that, and then I was that, that, and then we, we did that, and then we did that. Did we do that? We haven't done that. We, you know, we haven't done a viewer visit, but it's it's already so late, and this show really mm. kind of. Uh, we'll do it next time. But I do have the viewer video of the week, and it's pretty interesting. 
This is from Steve D. Skycam Video. He says, hey, Ken, it's Steve D. Skycam Video. This is the only working gravity ropeway in Lancashire, England. It's called the Clawton Aerial Ropeway and was built in 1924. I filmed it. Enjoy. It is the viewer video of the week. That looks like it'd be fun to ride. Yeah, it reminds me of Gatlinburg. You ever been to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, where they have those sky lifts? No, you know, I've never been there, ever. Sounds like a fun place. Yeah, it's awesome. Would you ride it? Yes. <laughs> you have to be in there with a bunch of rocks. Well, there you go. That is the Clawton Aerial Ropeway, built in 1924. It's the last one on the planet, apparently, at least in England. And that is from Steve D, Skycam Video. If you want to check out his channel, I think he's like two or three subscribers short of 1,000 subscribers, so maybe Come make on, his day. Subscribe, and subscribe yeah. to his channel and uh, make his day. And let me go. say this. That was yeah. a terrific video, Steve D. Thumbs up. Yeah. But nothing tops last week's viewer video of the week. <laughs> I don't care how many more viewer videos you do. If you do a thousand more shows, it will never top last <laughs> week's. And if you didn't see it, go back and watch the best of TNL from last week on Ken's channel, and you will laugh yourself silly. It's so good. Yeah, that was a that was a special moment unto itself. Oh. To, the, the guy flew a Mavic 2 into his own face, and... <laughs> And and before he went to the hospital, filmed himself. I mean, that's good presence of mind. That's that's YouTube magic. It was right there, and and it was a direct hit, boy. Oh man, yeah. Watch the the best of. And uh, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks uh, to everyone for coming back. And I don't, I don't know if the power's going to stay on all night, but I should probably go see if the radio station needs a switch or two. <laughs> It flipped. I think I hear people out there going, what's Ken doing in there? Shouldn't he turn the radio station on? I should probably go do that. But, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> bye bye We hope you enjoyed the show half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff Sills. Thank you, uh, what's your name? Kelly something. Kelly Green. And uh, thank you, Jason Shepard for being on standby for what had to have been the most boring half hour of your life. We'll have you back on the 30th of this month. Have no fear. Uh, until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for supporting the channel. Buh. And bye. And bye.